isn't a hallmark of equality the right to act as an individual? This, this is the debate I constantly run into whenever I write ab exactly about this issue, whether it's you know, a person of color who says, I don't believe in affirmative action, or it's a, a woman who says, I don't believe that uh, you know, contraception coverage is a legitimate political issue. Um, and the argument I often hear is, well, just like Irish Americans or Italian Americans came to this country, they were a block, and then they reached a measure of equality, or as some books say, they became white, right? That's the, and then they split their, their voting block because that's what you, that's the whole purpose, is you become a full American when you have the right to say, I'm voting as an individual, not as a block. How do you respond to that? Uh, you may be an individual, but they're collective consequences. Mm. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and, that's, and, and that's sort of, that's always the issue is when, when I hear, you know, people, pr and, and, and certainly you should have your autonomy and independence, but because of the particular history in this country, that there are collective uh, consequences for it, and so I think you have to always think about uh, that. And we have to learn how to look at them in an intersectional, us in the inter individuals even, in an intersectional way. So when you lose that intersectional, intersectional kind of framework, that's when you make mistakes. Yeah. Uh, there was also Hillary more recently, when speaking, uh, said something to the effect of uh, the great issue of, of equality, the great issue of the century was women's equality. And I'm going, I'm, yes, that is one great issue, <laughs> right. but couldn't you've just added race, you know, culture, couldn't you've just added some of these other things uh, to it and it would have made me more comfortable because I always have to think about how much the civil rights movement did for all women. You see, the civil rights movement didn't have black people written on it. It, it helped all people. Uh, it's still helping all people to achieve rights. And we just like to be acknowledged sometimes for doing that. Uh, it, it, the civil rights movement is not over. So we still have a chance for women to remember that. Keep in mind that you're talking about my ancestors, or you're leaving my ancestors out when you just say women's equality is the great issue of the century. I agree it is great, but there's something else that's there for me, and it has to be, as Dr. Giddings has just said, my blackness also is very important. If we could put the two of those together, we could overcome some of those crazy things we're hearing. Um, multiracial people, mixed race families, are the fastest growing demographic in the country. and. My question is, how do you think that is going to shape or possibly redefine uh, civil rights as we think of them and discuss them here in this country? Or will it? You know, many of us are, are children of multiracial, uh, our, our parents, my, my mom is not black. Uh, many of us, you know, we, I mean, you can look at us and see somebody was there. Something happened. Somebody deserted, yeah, their, happened. Somebody <laughs> deserted their children, <laughs> right. too, because we always right. blame black men for that right. desertion, but all of us didn't have black like, fathers or black right. mothers. So or as have, President Harding said, someone jumped a fence somewhere. Yes, yes, of course. So, who um, was I'm, allegedly part black. That's, for those who don't know, President <laughs> so, Harding um, is white. I'm George not sure what black. question it raises, because even when we're multiracial, uh, we know we're black, and that's the way most of us have to operate, as though we are black. Well the, well, the reason I, I, let me rephrase it, the reason I'm asking is because that's changing generationally. The, the, the self-identification mm -hmm. is shifting mm -hmm. the younger you go. That doesn't mean mm -hmm. they don't consider themselves minorities. Yes. It just means that there is more complexity to it. And so it I'm, is the big issue for them, I mean, because when we have people of all kinds of cultures in our families, and I know most people do. We can't hate people uh, just because of the, the color of their skin. We have to understand that there is another relationship there, and now it's called family. family. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, we, we have to start rethinking what we mean by black community. Mm. It's changed. Eugene Robinson wrote Disintegration. I knew which book you were talking right, about. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, in which he talks about uh, that the black community is now several communities. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the biracial community, it's the uh, uh, Caribbean American community. It's uh, all, all, all kinds of immigrant, <laughs> uh, immigrant uh, Africa communities, uh, and, and, and also economic stratification. And he says, so any, anybody who talks about the black community, I was talking about really symbolically, mm -hmm. because it's not. So we really have to start thinking about that, and and particularly, I think these biracial communities. Someone said that only four out of ten, African Americans now, four out of every ten African Americans 
have the experience of slavery, the South, the Great Migration to the North. Right. Well, look at President Obama's one. There's a different uh, black, uh, black experience. And, and, and so, and lots of others have that, have a different experience. So we do have to rethink those categories.